here for the Vogons farm uh, regarding the RM, or in this case Samsung GT8000. Uh, this is going to be a disassembly tutorial, theoretically, on how to take one of these apart, uh, which might help be helpful for anyone else out there who may have one similar. So, step one, of course, is to pull up on this battery tab here. You just insert your finger along the bottom here and basically pull this off upwards. But then you've got the battery which is on this little tab. Pull the battery out and then that's done. There are no PCI card PCMCIA card covers, don't need to worry about those. On the other side uh, there's a screw here. Mine doesn't have that, but there's a screw unscrew that, and then pull out the hard drive. Um, then for the CD-ROM drive, there's a little tab at the front. There. You pull it down towards the padlock. Like that. And then you grab hold of the multi-bay adapter and remove it. So in this case, mine is a Samsung disk drive. Now for the rest of this you're going to need a screwdriver, so I have one here, a little Phillips. And you're going to take out this screw up here, which is for the memory cover slot. These screws are specially designed so that they don't fall out of the cover. That's a helpful feature. There's our memory. That's the information on my RAM. And you just basically remove the RAM as you would in a regular laptop. That's on my safe. Then undo the screw over the mini PCI slot. Same sort of principle, lift the cover off. Now in there, you'll see a little red and black wire. I believe that's for the dial-up modem. You want to unplug that from the board side, or you can unplug it from the card side, it doesn't really matter. And then just pull the little metal tabs, and then the card will flip up, and then you can remove the wireless NIC. Uh, and there's some more information in there. Uh, mine says Matrix on the silk screen, because that's the model, I think, the RM Matrix 15. Keyboard. There are two screws uh, in this little area where the where it says GT8000. There are two screws in here and in here. You want to undo both of those and set them aside for safekeeping. Sometimes the screws won't come out. If you have a magnetized screwdriver, it may pull it out. But some of the time, you will need to shake the computer for them to come out. Here are our two screws. Now you want to keep your screws organized, so I'm going to separate these from any other screw, but I'm pretty sure all of the screws in this computer are the same length. Um, now I'll flip the computer over and open it up. At the bottom of the keyboard you will see some little tabs. One of them is underneath the left arrow key. Use a flathead screwdriver or your fingernails if they're long enough to press that tab in and at the same time pull the keyboard up from the corner. Keep your finger there whilst you go for the rest of the other clip which is under the space bar to the right hand side. And then in between the control and alt keys there's another one. But you do the same thing, you press in the keyboard or lift it out. And uh, you can continue taking it apart. Uh, in here, there is a little brown plastic tab which holds the keyboard in place. Gently pull it out and your keyboard flex will come out. That's your keyboard. Set that aside for safekeeping. Uh, next up, you've got a bunch of screws on the in 
inside, but we're not going to worry about this just yet because there's another screw that we need to take out first. Um, what you want to do is you want to open the screen all the way flat, and over here there's a little plastic hinge cover cap thing. Put your finger under it and pull up until it pops out. There's our little hinge cover, and hidden in there is the LCD um, cable. There's a little plastic tab in there, you just pull up on the plastic tab, and then the whole screen will pop out on a little connector right there. Be very careful as it's a display cable and you don't want to damage it. Now, uh, in order to disassemble the rest of the computer, we, get, we will need to now take the hinge covers off. So if we fold our display cable back into its little compartment, we're going to focus on the back of the computer, back here. Uh, this one is above the PS2 port. And um, um, the method I find best that works for me is to pry from the top of the hinge cover and then it will click out. It's a bit fiddly, but you'll eventually get there. There we go. And it'll, it'll just flop out if you fiddle around with it enough. So there's our first hinge cover. And then on the other side, it's the same deal. Just do it the same method. Pull down from the top. Keep wiggling around and pressing around until it comes out. Sometimes this is a very fiddly operation and it may take longer than necessary, but if you don't act too violent you shouldn't break them. There we go, mine came off with a little bit of force. Don't be too violent, or else you may snap them. Uh, then underneath those hinge covers you have got two Phillips head screws, both mounted here and mounted here. You want to unscrew both of those. It's always ideal to keep your screws uh, in an organised location so you don't lose them. So here are our LCD screws, or some of them. Now flip the computer upside down, so there are two screws here marked LCD rather conveniently, and you want to undo both of those. Keep your LCD panel screws organised with the rest. These, I believe, are M2.5 uh, 12 or 10 screws. After removing those, you want to go back to your screen latch, pull it open, very carefully of course, now there's no LCD screws. Gently open it up, and then just Pull up vertically on the panel and your screen will come off. Uh, in my instance, mine says RM, but yours will say Samsung. So after we've got the screen out of the way, we, we can now disassemble the rest of the system unit. Uh, so to do that, flip it upside down and um, remove basically all of the screws that are left on the bottom of the unit. In this case, there's one near the hard drive slot. One near the RAM and battery slot, which is right here. And then you'll have four along the front of the computer, which are quite easy to get to.
Next, you want to turn the computer back over, and uh, inside the computer you will see several screws. Um, now, the screws you want to remove are as follows. You want to remove this one, which is next to the keyboard slot. The lighting is quite bad, but I have improved it slightly. This screw, this screw, this screw, and these four screws here, which are on top of the CPU. You might also want to remove these two screws as well, but I don't think they're required to be removed. So that's what we're going to do. Make sure to keep these screws organised. Now, yours will probably mention something underneath the keyboard about to remove the heatsink, turn it on, wait for the thing to warm up, or else it will cause damage to the CPU. Uh, if you've put new thermal paste on, this shouldn't be an issue, as the thermal bond will be fairly modern and will be easy to be broken. Um, if it is an older style of thermal paste, or if you haven't uh, redone the thermal paste at all, uh, I'd recommend following that guide, turning it on for a while, letting it heat up, and then removing it. So we've removed those three brass screws I was going on about, so now I'm going to remove these four screws above the CPU. These screws are very small and are probably easy to be lost, so keep track of these screws. You don't want to lose them, because a bad thermal bond between the CPU and the heatsink is not good. If the screws don't come out, uh, give it a little tap, and if they still don't come out, just undo them a bit further, they might still be attached. For example, Once you've ejected all of the screws necessary, you're going to want to undo two screws in between the little power button assembly up here, uh, which were obstructed by the screw, but aren't obstructed anymore. Organize your screws. Next, you want to open the little flap at the back as to not get it caught on anything, and then uh, remove the heat sink by. Oh no, I think I do need to take these two screws out. Always a good idea to remove all the screws necessary. I think there's also a screw down here where the display connector is. Uh, it's also quite a tiny little thing. So you want to be careful with that one as well. Remove that. And then you want to start uh, separating the bottom and top covers on the computer. There's a little um, ribbon cable plug here for the trackpad. I'm going to unplug that to prevent damage. God, there's another screw hidden down in this corner uh, around this area here. It's very close to the exhaust vent. I didn't notice that before. My bad. I will remove that screw. And then now your entire assembly should lift up. Good enough for you to um, lever out the CPU fan assembly. 
which is connected by this little plug and an extender. I'm going to unplug that connector. Put that screw that I forgot about somewhere else. Uh, it turns out you didn't need to remove these two screws at all, so avoid removing those two screws. Move the heatsink out of the way. Then there's another connector just down here, which is this connector right here. It's another one of those um, Lego connectors, so you just pull up on it to get it out. And then the rest of the top half will come out, which will also be useful if you're replacing the belt in the floppy disk drive or doing any work on the palm rest or speaker assembly. It's a very helpful um, component. Uh, now, on my computer, uh, to get to the CMOS battery, you want to pull up on this interconnect board here, as it's connected, via a little edge connector right here. And then the, C the BIOS battery connector is located right here. And here is my CR2032 package that I custom made and it's doing its job at keeping the computer's date and time set. Uh, now, if you remove this little circuit board by taking this screw out here, It might take a bit of um, missing around to get access to, but removing that, I think, will give you access to... Oh. There we go. That will give you access to the S3 graphics card there. Although, there is no real reason to remove this card, so you can just leave it plugged in. It's connected by two edge connectors on either side of the graphics card chip. Uh, to remove the CPU, it's pretty simple. You just get a very small jewel of screwdriver, insert it into the locking screw, and then pull your CPU out. Mine, of course, will need new thermal paste when you put this back together, so be sure to have thermal paste on hand. And um, this is the inside, so you've got the card reader slot stuff here, which I believe is removable but I won't be removing that. There's another interne interconnect board down here which will connect your battery and your multi-bay up to the motherboard. And then there is our extension cable that the CPU fan attaches to. Um, so that is the disassembly on the RM GT uh, or the RM or Samsung GT8000. I hope this was informal. Uh, I mean, informational. And now we're going to put it back together again, as I'm not going to leave anybody hanging. So if you have removed this little circuit board with the power jack on it, this is the power board. Um, you want to have this uh, convenient. This is also contains the power button. It says Matrix Plus DC, DC and CPU, which is interesting. So you want to put this on over where those connectors are, and then press down gently on both connectors to ensure that they're making a good connection. And once you've done that, take the black screw that you've removed from the top corner, make sure to get the power jack in its slot, it'll make a click when it's in place. Then you want to screw in that screw in the top corner that I've removed mine from. There may also be another oops. There may also be another screw mounted here, but mine doesn't have that. 
Now, to reinstall the interconnect board, which I've removed here, for the keyboard and um, well, uh, yeah, for the keyboard and touchpad, you just want to insert that into its own little spot here. It'll have a connector here. Now, I believe I may have lost the screw that connects here. I think. But never fear. Put this right. There you go when you get your palm rest touch pad assembly. Click that back over. There are no plastic tabs you need to worry about as far as I'm aware. So that will just all go back here. Yep, just reconnect your um touchpad connector here, and your LEDs will connect into that little connector card thing here. Be sure to have thermal paste handy, so I shall go fetch some of that, wherever it may be hiding. Once you've done that, uh, I've got my thermal paste handy. You want to fish out your little connector for the CPU fan, which is on an extension lead of some sort. And you connect the little two wire plug up so it's like that. Now, while you're at it, uh, it's advised to clean your CPU, but since I've done this so many times, I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to add a tiny little dot of thermal paste just so I can get at least a thermal bond with the um, heat sink again. Then you just Fold the uh, heat sink assembly back under. You may need to fiddle around with the fans, power cable, and that for it to get to fit. If you have tweezers to hand, uh, that's even more helpful. It's all nice and snug. Fold your power cables for the fan out of the way for the display connector so that we don't obstruct it. Then you want to get your four screws, the, the four brass screws, and reinsert them back into the positions that they came out of. So in this case, there is one down here. There's one that goes down here. There's one that goes a lot down the corner of the CPU all the way over here. That's nice and tight. And there should be another one which I think the keyboard screws are on the left so this should probably go here in the center there and that screw for the interconnect board is indeed that one there so then you want to get your four really little screws which came out of the heat sink assembly and you want to do you want to tighten them up in a diagonal fashion so you want to go one two then three and four basically the opposite side, so 4 is on the lower left hand and 5 is 
on the upper right hand. Then remember your two screws that up here, uh, those go where the power button assembly is here. Tighten those up nice and good. Try not to over tighten the screws though, they don't really like it that much. Uh, also you will need this little tiny little guy that you took out. That goes in here. Once you've done that, I think our next stage to tackle would be the case screws that we took out earlier, which are all over here. We're going to start with the two ones on the corners, so you want to start with this one, next to the Windows product key and the battery slot. Another one which is in between these two drive slots. And then you should have four left. These go along the bottom of the computer. So you want to do those up. If you have an electric screwdriver, um, this would of course speed the process up dramatically, but regrettably my electric screwdriver has ceased functioning. So once you've done that, I think our next um, order of business is to tackle the LCD. So your LCD should be over here. Um, it might be a good time to take the time to clean it once you've taken it off with a um, microfiber cloth, all that jazz. Uh, then to reinsert the display connector, feed it down into its little chamber. And then, yeah, click it into its little socket. Once it's in the socket, uh, in, in, once the screen is mounted in its little positioning area, close the screen and secure the panel from falling out by inserting its two little screws that we found hidden under the hinge covers earlier. Sit those here and here. I'll flip the computer upside down and insert the two screws which are marked LCD on the bottom. You should be able to find out where they go by their little bulge, as they aren't compatible with each other, so you can't get them mixed up.
open the screen up, get your little one which protects the display connector, uh, the display cable, and insert it. I want to say with the with this little clip at the back. Insert it with that facing. Insert that with the clip first. should be that installed. Give it a visual inspection at the, at the rear of the computer to make sure it looks decently installed. And once you've confirmed it's decently installed, eject your little brown connector where your keyboard will plug in. And basically if you've already removed the keyboard already, it should be easy to stick it back in. Just insert it and then clip this little red thing back over the, the wire so that it's crimped and it won't come out. Reinsert your keyboard, so these four little metal fingers at the top of the keyboard. Insert the four metal fingers first and then press on it until all the little plastic clips snap back into place. Then close your computer up, flip her over and then you've got two screws for the keyboard which go into the holes marked KBD. Then you will want your SEM2000 um, NIC. You might have a different type of network uh, card, but I have that. So you insert your little two wire cable into the connector insert the card and then, like a stick of RAM, click it into place. For our memory, we have this Samsung stick. That is the information on the stick if you can read it out. If not, it is 0052 Korea M464S1724 BT1-L1L. And uh, ours was installed in this slot closest to the middle. It's always best to install the slots, the RAM, into the slots that they came out of. Then you want to need your two covers uh, for the mini PCI and memory, so slot those in. They are metal and nicely constructed, so they should slot in with these. This computer's construction is mostly metal, so it is a very high quality build. You're going to take your hard drive now, and you're going to slot it in, and, and then screw your screw in if you have it, but I don't have that, so I'm going to skip that stage. CD-ROM drive, slot it in until it clicks, battery, slot it in with this connector facing this way direction the other way. Then your little plastic cover, stick it on the top and then slam it into place. And that should be the entire RM GT8000 um, disassembled and reassembled. Now if you have power in your battery, which I do, uh, give it a little system test, ensure it posts and boots. So in my in mine, mine turns on. Press the F2 key to get into the BIOS, and uh, if you have unconnect, if you have disconnected the BIOS battery, reconnect, uh, redo all the settings. Which in my case, uh, I might have dislodged something in the in, in, in the uh, battery, so mine has all reset. So reset it all up to the modern date and time. So in my instance, it would be. Sunday the 16th of January, so that would be 01-16-2022, and the time is currently 13.09. Don't forget about the seconds, it's, um, it'll only make it at least a minute fast, or such. Legacy diskette A, make sure that's set to 1.44 megabytes because we have a, a floppy drive in here. Primary master should be the 2004 megabyte thing, which is my travel star, then DVD-ROM, and then
and then there should be CPU type Pentium 3, 640 megabytes, and such. Uh, make sure the installed OS is Windows 98 ME 2000 ACPI. Single mouse, enabled, PAL, LCD, both DOS, all of that. Leave the security stuff alone. Intel speed step is automatic, power savings is set to disabled on mine for some reason, but I don't really see the option or the point of doing it. Logo screen is enabled and summary screen is disabled. And your boot device priority you may want to set as hard the um, CD-ROM before the hard drive, so we're going to do that real quick. So there we go, so ACPI is above hard drive. Then you want to hit save and exit. My hard drive is making strange noises, so... And I've got the power button blinking, so I might want to turn this off. Before it runs out of power and corrupts the hard drive, so in that case we have fixed and uh, disassembled an RM GT8000 uh, notebook computer also known as the Samsung GT8000. Um, I hope this was an informative video and uh, happy to help anyone who may have the same machine and is looking to disassemble it.